Thank you, Cliff, for joining me. Uh, thank you, uh, Congressman LaMalfa, for allowing me time to address this important issue. The destruction of the Klamath Dams is a classic case of misdiagnosing the problem and then applying the wrong remedy. Destroying the dams on the Klamath will not save the salmon. Returning more river habitat to its natural state will not save the salmon. Sealing all the water from farmers and ranchers and putting it in stream will not save the salmon. Why not? Because the main problem facing salmon is not the dams. The main problem facing salmon are the conditions salmon face in the ocean. There may be someday a modest benefit to these fish after the dams have been removed and when millions upon millions of tax dollars are spent on habitat recovery. But these misplaced efforts will not bring fish runs back. And whatever the modest improvement might be, it will not be worth the loss of the clean electrical power that has been created by these dams. And certainly the few additional fish that we turn will not justify the increased flows of water taken from the farmers. Why? Because again, habitat is not the issue. There are hundreds of miles of unused habitat and the volume of water is not the issue. For the past 20 years, water flows using water taken from farmers exceeded that which would have been available in the Klamath River under normal conditions. And despite this additional water, the fish have not recovered. Again, the problems facing the fish need to be solved are found in the ocean. If further evidence of this is needed, look at what has happened on the Elwell River in Washington State. Two dams were removed over 10 years ago and there's still been no increase in fish. But who is it really that bears the brunt of the damage occurring as a result of the destruction of these four dams? Who is it that actually suffers? First and foremost, the fish. They're the real losers in this entire misdirected exercise. The National Marine Fisheries Service is being derelict in its duty to study and then protect salmon against the challenges they face in the sea. Secondly, the farmers found in the Klamath Basin. These people are truly bearing the cost of shutting down and now removing these dams. First came the loss of the low cost electrical power generated by the four dams that made possible movement of massive volumes of irrigation and bird refuge water across the basin. Then came the taking of the farmer's water to flush fish down the river to the sea and now the stealing of even more of the farmer's water to clean up by flushing to the ocean. A huge portion of the 20 million cubic yards of silt and mud left from destruction of the dams. But, it's a total, but it is the total loss of the value of the farmers. Land, much of it being farmed now by third and fourth generation member, family members, that is the real and unforgivable travesty. This inequitable and unjust consequence of the imposition of the ESA, the Endangered Species Act, must be and will be addressed in my subcommittee and Congressman Lamalfa's on natural resources. The third problem we face is the millions of costs in dollars by, uh, by the electrical ratepayers and taxpayers of Oregon, California, and the nation. Remember, the dams are private property. There's a tax adjustment somewhere on the books of Pacific Corps that I'm guessing is in the numerous millions. Finally, the millions upon millions of wildfowl that once used the Klamath Refuge as an important part of the Pacific Flyway can't. They will not have the thousands of acres of water that once upon a time supplied um, these birds with clean water delivered by dam-driven electrical pumps. There are many more vic victims of a removal, but time does not permit further discussion. Sadly, one, the one predictable thing that's going to emerge from this billion, billion dollar exercise is in self-destruction will be the conclusion, the ultimate conclusion, that the salmon's most challenging existential issue are ocean, trawler, and predation based. But these obvious and inconvenient facts will not be accepted until every drop of water has been wrung out of every farm and ranch in the Klamath, taking with it the livelihoods of farmers and ranchers and cities in the upper reaches of that basin. The spotted owl debacle was the last time this many thousands of people and businesses were sacrificed up on the altar of flawed science. The last time the ESA ruined this many people's lives, it was loggers and their communities. This time it's the ranchers and farmers who, according to courts, bureaucrats, and environmentalists are expendable. I assure you, they are not. Thank you, Mr. Lamalfa. I yield back.